Hey everyone, in my previous videos, we looked at how the Flipper Zero could read analog voltages. On my Discord server, NoName asked if it was possible for the Flipper Zero to output analog voltages. In this video, we'll look at three techniques for outputting analog voltages. Let's get started. The first technique we'll look at is called an R to R ladder. Here's the Wikipedia article that explains how to build an R to R ladder. I built an R2R ladder. This version has six data bits. This is the most significant bit, and this is the least significant bit. Currently, all the bits are connected to this ground wire. And you can see we have this first resistor and the second resistor, so this is this 2R. And then two resistors, and that's that 2R. And then a single resistor, and that's our R. And then two resistors is our 2R. And a single resistor, that's our R and two resistors is our 2R and so forth. And then finally we have our output and then we have two resistors, that's this last bit. All of the resistors need to be the same value, but the value you choose for R isn't that important. You could choose 1K or 10K or something like that. So typically each one of these bits would go into a GPIO pin on the flipper zero. For this video, we're just going to use the 3.3 and ground. So we have ground along this wire, and then we have 3.3 along this wire. And right now, all of my bits are set to ground. Our output is connected to the voltmeter, and so we can see we're currently at zero volts when all of our data is at zero. If instead we did 100000, it should output 50% of our 3.3 volts and our meters at 1.655, which is almost half of 3.3 volts. Next, let's do 10101, which is 42 in decimal. And 42 divided by 63 is 2 thirds. And so 2 thirds of 3.3 should be 2.2 volts. And the actual voltage we're reading is 2.174. So you could use GPIO to control these blue wires instead of us manually choosing the plus or the ground. And you can see my other videos if you wanna know how to use C or JavaScript to control those GPIO wires. Next, let's see what happens when we connect a load to our output. Uh, this is a 330 ohm resistor, so I'll connect one side of our load to ground, and then I'll connect the other side to our output. And you can see the voltage drop significantly. So to fix this, we'll use an op amp. And the fourth pin of our op amp is going into our five volts on the flipper zero. For 3.3 volt output, you wanna power the op amp with a five volt power. Uh, the ground pin is the one straight across from it, and we'll connect that to ground. And then next we have our output pin, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect that to pin one on our op amp. And then we'll take our output that we had before and connect that into pin three on the app amp. Finally, we're gonna connect pins one and two, and this will set our op amp to be a unity gain amplifier. And the op amp I'm using is an LM324. We'll go into GPIO and turn on that five volts. And so now our op amp has power, and it has our signal and our output. And you can see we're getting 2.178. And this is when our data is set to 42. Now we'll connect one side of our load back to that ground wire. And then we'll connect the other side to our op amp output. And you can see our voltage is 2.173 still. And so using the op amp, our load had a minimal impact on the output voltage. Here's the data sheet for that op amp. You can see pin four was our five volts. Pin 11 was our ground. Pin three was our input. We connected pins one and two together to make that unity gain amplifier. And pin one was our output. And this chip has four op amps, which are mirror images of each other. On my Discord server, I often have giveaways. And one of the giveaways I have is this prototyping boards from Make It Hacken. Make It Hacken donated these boards for me to give away. And while I've given them away, I've never actually built anything. So I thought this would be the perfect time 
to take one of these make it hacking breadboards and actually build a circuit. Before we jump into a circuit, let's take a look at the three different boards. The first board we have works just like a breadboard. We have columns of five pins that are connected together. And at the top and bottom, we have our power rails. At the bottom of our board, all of our GPIO pins are also exposed. If you want five volts, connect some solder between the first and second pad. And if you want 3.3 volts, connect between the second and third pad. And for the top plus, use the pads on the right. Next, we have a large prototype board. There's three connections for each of the flipper pins and all the other connections are independent. And then finally, we have a smaller prototype board as well. And sometimes with this board, instead of the 90 degree pins, people will use straight pins and mount the board flush against the flipper. So here you can see the front and the back of the prototype board. And I've built that R to R ladder circuit. We have our ground and that connects to our resistor and then our second resistor. And you can see that junction where we just soldered a blob. And then that resistor connects into our 2R and our R. Going down from that point, you can see there's 2R and that connects into PA7, which is our least significant bit. If we instead go up, that's our R and it's actually shifted over one row. And that resistor comes down and joins with our other R and 2R. This pattern repeats for all the bits. And then our output runs over to pin three of the op amp. Pins two and one in the post are soldered together in this little L. We ran our five volt wire on the back side of the board, looped it through, and then soldered it to pin four. And then finally, we connected ground to pin 11 on our op amp. I wrote a JavaScript which outputs the text 1.65 volts and sets the pin. And then it outputs 2.2 volts and sets those three pins. And then it outputs one volts and sets those pins. So here's the program running. I'll put a link to this in the video description and I'll upload it into my GitHub tutorials. If you have any questions, please reach out on Discord. The second technique we'll look at for creating analog voltages is using the MCP4725. This has a 12-bit converter, unlike the last circuit we looked at that was 6 bits. So we'll pass a value between 0 and 4095 to set that voltage. The output is a percentage of that supply voltage, and the supply voltage we can use the flipper's 3.3 or 5 volt pins. Instead of needing 12 wires, we just need the clock and data wires. The flipper uses I squared C to specify a value between 0 and 4095. That value will set the input register. And then those 12 bits will be copied into our DAC register. And then something similar to the R to R ladder, we'll look at those 12 bits and output a voltage. It also has a built-in op amp, but I'm not sure how much current it supports. I bought this little board on Amazon, which has the MCP4725. It also has I squared C pull-up resistors, and it has pads you can solder if you want to change the I squared C address. And you can see on the bottom there, we have ground, VCC, data, clock, a second ground, and our voltage out. So I really liked how this breadboard went together. I found it really easy to solder, and I think it's easier to see where all the traces are going. So our PC1 is going to SDA on our MCP chip. Our PC0 is going to the SCL. There's two grounds, so I chose the right ground and connected it to the ground up above. And our VCC is going to the plus up above, which is five volts. I could have used 3.3 instead. And then our output is going into this potentiometer and a pull down resistor, which goes into the op amp. And then our op amp output and input are connected together here. So that gives us output on that first socket. So that's just a unity gain amplifier like we saw in the previous op amp example. I've connected my voltmeter to the output and ground wires. And this is just a little sample application I wrote, which uses I squared C communication to talk to the MCP4725. And as we press the right arrow, we're able to change the values that we're sending. 
So you can see right now I'm sending a value of around 2000 to the chip. And that represents about 49% of the total voltage. And you can see we're at 1.6 volts. And as we increase this, we're able to go and output different voltages. So the MCP4725 has that 12 bits, so we can pass a value between zero and 4095. And that value is the percentage of voltage out based on the input voltage of 3.3 or five volts. On the left side of the board, I have this PC3 pin going into this voltage divider with these two resistors. And that makes it so that we can give an input voltage of up to 3.3 volts on this first pin here. And that'll get scaled down to a value between zero and two volts, which is what our ADC uses from my previous ADC videos. So plugging that into that first socket, you can see we're now at about two volts when more ADC is at full. And as we lower what our output is, we're able to see those voltages. So this is the flipper both setting an output using the DAC chip and reading that voltage using the ADC input and a voltage divider. The last technique I wanted to talk about was pulse width modulation. So pin A7 here is going into our input one on our op amp. And then we have that unity gain. And the output is going to a 10K resistor and then into a 10 microfarad capacitor that connects to ground. So this will create an RC circuit and between that capacitor and that resistor is our output. We're gonna run that over into the other input on the other side of that op amp, op amp two, run that in unity configuration and we'll run that up to the second pin. And to help us see what's happening, that third pin, I've gone ahead and connected that to pin three. So that's gonna be our A7 output. I've connected our meter to socket two and ground. Our pulse width modulation frequency is at 1000. You could change this to be faster or slower if you wanna see the impact. And then there's our duty cycle. So this is the percent of the time the pulse is on. And you can see as I'm changing that percentage that our voltage is changing. So as we increase that duty cycle, our voltage continues to increase. So here I've connected pin three to our oscilloscope and so you can see the voltage you can see the pulses that are happening from our a7 chip and then here on the bottom you can see the total voltage so that bottom line you can see rises in voltage and then here you can see we're at about 50 percent of that duty cycle and there's our voltage and as we increase our duty cycle the voltage line goes up and as we decrease the duty cycle the voltage level goes down so hopefully now you can see the impact of that RC circuit and how it's able to convert those pulses into just a more flat average voltage. Some meters will read these pulses and average the voltage over time. And so that's important to understand that you may be getting a pulse and not just a constant voltage. Thanks for watching. Hopefully now you know a few techniques for outputting analog voltages using the Flipper Zero. Please like and subscribe. Don't forget to join my Discord server for giveaways. And if you have any questions, please leave them below or on my Discord server.